Crisps or nuts? Maybe nuts. The reading has already begun, Lolly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first bit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Caroline O'Donoghue. I'm a journalist for The Pool, a novelist, a podcaster, and also an amateur tarot fan. I'm here today with comedian Lolly Adafofe to do her tarot and see what she'll tell me. <laughs> We're like two aliens who like <laughs> have heard of the pub yeah, and are yeah. trying to emulate <laughs> like, what it is. <laughs> I've never done tarot before. What is your experience of the occult in general? Um, it's absolutely zero experience. <laughs> Where would you say your cynicism level is with all of this? Seven. But like, I'll read horoscopes and be like, oh, uh, ooh. yeah, maybe I am really nice. <laughs> so, so it's 78 cards. Okay. Um, this one is full of like naked ladies. Like Lovely. this one, she's got my, she's feeling herself. Oh. So in tarot, we've got four suits. And then on top of that, there's something called the Major Arcana, which is where you'll get like the death card and all the like the biggies that you're used to seeing on TV right, kind right. of thing. With that in mind, I'm going to ask you to shuffle. Is there an aim that I should have with this? That would be good, actually. Yeah. So if you have like a specific question that you're looking to ask the card. Um, guys, I'm going to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year. Uh, am I going to have a nice time? Ooh, very nice. So take your left hand and split the three ways. Remind me what your show is called again? Lolly Three. Lolly Three. Yeah, it's my third show. Very Thank you. good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now we're going to do seven cards in a kind of like a spread that I basically made up. Mm. So it is going to be like a horseshoe shape. So your first card is going to represent where you are in the situation. Okay. There's really no need to be nervous, this is just a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, the second card represents a first step. Uh, third card represents uh, a first sort of struggle. And the next card is your biggest ally. And that could be like either a person you know, or like just something that like lives within you. Hmm. Like Mufasa and the Lion King. Yes. And then your next card is um, your second step. And then uh, your second big struggle. And then your outcome. <laughs> um, oh, these are super interesting cards already. I mean, it's it's weird that we um we talked about the death card before. <laughs> is it up? Because here it is. <laughs> Your first card, Lolly Adipope, is the most famous card in all of tarot, the death card. No way. <laughs> no. I'm out of here. So <laughs> no. <Bye. laughs> um, okay, so. The pr this is like a really friendly deck. It's called the Tower of the Old Path. It doesn't seem like it's friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Based on this Grim Reaper and this baby. Yes. <laughs> that he's about to murder. Lovely. Um, no, First so, card. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's actually, I always see it as being a really good thing um, because uh, this has been renamed in this deck as the Close, which always sort of signifies the end of a, like a part of your life. Okay. And also the beginning of a new one. Okay. Um, What's, what's kind of interesting to me from what I know of you already, obviously we've never met before today, mm. but like you are someone who's coming out of a phase of being like the hot new thing on the scene mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm. But now you're like, it feels like you're getting into this part of your career where you're like, it's not so much about like hot new thing, but it's about like making the work happen. And it's sure. about like, you know, just letting a legacy down. Does that, mm. does that like jive with you at all? Oh, my completion yeah. the no, I think that's that does. I mean, it sounds lovely to me. <laughs> um, I can't I find it hard to agree and be like, yeah, um, <laughs> I am a legend now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess so. Um, maybe because uh, I've done like quite a few Edinburgh shows, yeah. and now I'm starting to do more acting and TV really? stuff. So maybe it's like an end to the live stuff. Right. I don't want to say that, though. <laughs> no, of course not. I'm really interested in that sort of transition, because obviously mm. the sort of stand-up comedian to film, to TV or whatever, is like a well-trodden path. Yeah. Like, is there like an anxiety about that, of being like, oh, I'm someone who used to write their own material, but yeah. now my, like, I'm, other words are in my mouth. Is that weird? Yeah. I, well, I, I quite like, I find it a lot easier to do acting because you don't have to write it, and you just get told what to do. Yeah. And um, you don't have to sort of make your own deadlines and things like that. But then I do also have kind of like a small chip on my shoulder about character comedians and female character comedians. I think people, a lot of people think that they are just good actresses yeah. who are 
sort of writing some silly stuff that they can perform for themselves and then eventually going to become actresses. Right. Whereas I want to be like, no, we're all character comedians and we write our own material in the same way that comedians do. And we're all writers and comedians, not just yeah. people who can act. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. So I'm going to die. <laughs> die a grisly death yes and we turn an, back into a baby yes while yes. an owl watches yes <laughs> so that's what tarot is <laughs> okay yeah um then your next card is the empress who's just a lady giving birth in the forest love that's so me <laughs> <laughs> i mean it me yes <laughs> these tarot cards are roasting me <laughs> Um, well, so, like this is like one of those class again, one of these classic tarot cards that like it feels like it means one thing, but when you bring it into the modern world, it means a lot more. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, this was like, oh, congratulations, you're going to get pregnant tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> good. But actually, it's much more um, uh, all-encompassing than that. So it's about like being almost like pregnant with your own creativity and okay. it's like and feeling like you've got so much stuff coming out of you right now yeah. a lot of ideas a lot of ambition mm -hmm. a lot of like things that need to happen and it's almost like the world can't catch up quickly enough yeah so cool. is that something that you relate to uh yeah i think so um i mean I, a lot more than the sort of the death card um <laughs> i think my issue is like i have lots of ideas and then um, I never actually write them or like make them into something. Yeah. So like with my Edinburgh producer at the moment, I call, I met up with him and was like, okay, so I've got this idea where I could basically do a very good Tony Braxton impression, but I don't know how to make that <laughs> part of the show. <laughs> Can you please do your Tony Braxton impression? I think the music has to be playing at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a lot of those. I just text my producer all the time, like, okay, so what if um, there was a screen behind and it was a hologram of my head? And then I'm, I'm still in front of the hologram and I'm doing a choreographed dance that is the same as the hologram. So I have a lot of those kind of ideas that he's like, How big is your budget? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess, yeah, that kind of, that kind of works. Yeah, card. it definitely feels like it works. Um, mm. And then you've got the next card. These are all very like interesting classic cards that you're, mm. you're pulling. You're a classic gal. Like a great card. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this guy is um, the wise one, but um, in past decks he's often called the hermit okay so his whole deal is that like sometimes people just get too much for him sure, sure. and um uh, yeah, true. this this card generally happens after you feel like you've given a lot of yourself to a lot of different people whether you've like a lot to like other people's like emotional baggage is kind of on your shoulders mm. a lot of professional commitments and you sort of lose touch with the fact that like you know, that, that ability to say to someone like, I can't do your show, I can't meet up with you, I can't hear yeah. about your boyfriend because I need to look after my tiny butterfly that I'm keeping alive in my coat. Yes, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I feel seen. Do you feel seen? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's your relationship to a card like that? I mean, all of these things are 100% true. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think... <laughs> Everything. Yeah, like, like I think recently I've um, got to that stage where it took me like quite a long time. I think other people get to it a lot earlier than I did. But where I'm like, oh, you cannot go to a party. And it's really? very nice <laughs> when you just don't go. But when I was younger, I was always like, you have to go to every party and you have to be out all the time, yeah. every weekend, having a really great time. Otherwise, what else are you can do with your life? Yeah. And I can't remember when the first time it happened, but I remember just being like, I think I had like three birthdays in one evening and I was trying to plan how I could go to all three of them. Right. And then I just, someone suggested not doing that. And I was like, <laughs> A revolutionary idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and, it, and it's just such a lovely relief now to be like, yeah. actually, no, I'm going to lie face down in my bed in the dark. Nice, and I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> Do you feel like that, like, essentially, like a drag queen, your job is to sell drinks and make people laugh yeah, and, like, yeah. and, and create a social atmosphere where people can feel relaxed and yeah, fun. Yeah. But you then have the pressure to, like, be that. Yeah, you, you feel like uh, your personality has to reflect your brand, I suppose, in a way. Yeah. So you kind of have to be this funny person all the time. Otherwise, people will be like, well, why would I want to go and see that? Because that's, yeah. that's what you're going to be on stage. Um, and also, I think sometimes I'm like, oh, do I want to do a gig for 40 pounds in zone eight? Oh. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, whereas in the beginning, I was like, you should do gigs all the time because everything's useful. Yeah. And then now I'm like, but I think it'll actually be less useful because I'll have a horrible time. Right. <laughs> so this Eight of Pentacles guy, he's very, very interesting because he's like somebody who uh, works incredibly hard doing the same sort of thing over and over and over again to the point where it's, it's both perfect and frustrating. 
Mm. Um, and that sort of strikes me as being very comedy, right? Where you like you have to like right. do the same show over and over again and like yeah, have, yeah. And still have a delivery like you're just coming up with it. Yeah, you know? yeah, I guess so, yeah. Um, and so this in the position in this spread, it's very much like your greatest ally is that your ability to work incredibly hard. It's a, <laughs> it's very much a card of work ethic and okay. just like girl like you're just you are like in the basement just sewing up your little stars just like wow la, 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 la. okay <laughs> like i'm um, making it happen but yeah do you, do you feel like that with comedy you do you do sort of have that thing where you have to make it like perfect because it definitely is a card of perfectionism yes yeah i think i do but maybe not in quite in that way mm -hmm. so like i can't like write something that i don't think is good and then just try it out i have to wait until i think it's perfect yeah and then perform it so what's like the I mean, if you want to do a little bit of a character right now, <laughs> that would be cool, but this I'm not pushing character. you. <laughs> My whole life. Everything is drag. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like, what, so what's the, the journey from like, you know, observing a kind of an interesting human trait about someone, mm. taking that and then going, making a full realized character? For me, yeah. it's a voice that I can do that's funny, plus <laughs> a, like an aim that the character has, plus... Yeah a flaw that the character has that means that they don't realise their aim, which is probably a theory that someone else made up like 50 yeah. years ago, but in my head I'm like, I made this up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have one character that's a, he's like a cultural awareness guy who's right. teaching people how to be verbally sensitive. Okay. Um, so that's his aim. And then his flaw is that actually he's very un PC himself yeah. and uses lots of words that he thinks are fine to use because like he has black friends and things. <laughs> Um, and then the voice is based on a woman that I worked with who's actually really nice. <laughs> um, and it's nothing like that person. But it's like a woman who's like, okay, okay, guys. So I just put all of those things together and made it into this sort of like grotesque man. So there's one bit when he's like, um, okay, so um, can't say brainstorm anymore in case you offend people with epilepsy. Um, so you're going to need to say thought seizure. Thought seizure. <laughs> And that is what, that's the kind of thing that you can say instead, and that's sort of the first step on the road to becoming more politically correct in 2018. Um, I love, so, like, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hand movements are so essential. So all of that stuff comes, like, way after it. Um, so when I first wrote it, I think he just sort of swagged around a bit. But because I've been doing it for a couple of years now, he's just got all sorts of, like... Yeah, just weird, all these weird like, little mannerisms. Okay, yeah. <laughs> They're really fun. It's kind of like a weird dance. Is it almost more fun to take the piss out of male characters? Yeah, I think so. But then I also have characters that are like annoying girls that are quite funny to sort of do like weird. <laughs> <laughs> like that kind oh of God. thing. <laughs> you seriously like transformed. It was like Kafka. <laughs> Like just yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, the, it's whether they're annoying or not is, is what makes yeah. it easiest. And that's the thing, um, annoying is something all the genders have in common. Yeah, moment. exactly, exactly. Everyone can be a pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so then we're moving on to the second half of your reading. Uh, we're talking about the Ten of Pentacles. And uh, tens are really interesting in tarot because like, uh, like normal cards, it's like the end of the suit. So you call oh, it to the okay. end of cycle or whatever. And uh, these, are, these are like people who... Pentacles represent kind of money. They're like, oh, we finally have enough. <laughs> okay. It's like it's not that they've got like massive riches and wealth or anything, but mm -hmm. it's that that ability to like look back at everything and like, oh, I'm not gonna get kicked out of my house tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. afford an extra shot of hazelnut with my latte. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So like, I, mean, I wouldn't, you know, ask you about your money <laughs> you asked me how much money there is in my bank account how much money do you have in your monzo can you show me <laughs> but i imagine that there is um because i know you're you're doing uh stuff in la and and, mm. and you're with in a show with steve buscemi now yes. right which yeah, is yeah, yeah. like i'd love to hear more about that please <laughs> um but like is there sort of like a degree of like oh wow things are really coming together almost to the surprise of myself yes yeah, yeah. i think so because when i was younger my brother's a very successful um, financial strategist. Oh, wow. And he went to Oxford and is a very cool guy, but obviously yeah. is doing really Older well. Older brother or younger brother? Older brother. Okay, so goodness. just two of you? Yeah, just okay. two of us. Um, and my, fam my dad was a doctor and my mum um, did computer science. So okay. they're all like a very sciencey family. And when I was younger, I was like, I want to be an actress and I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I am going to move back in with you and not really earn any money. So for a long time, I was kind of the one who was like, well, what is she doing with her life? Do, oh, does wow. she really know? And now I'm like, 
I'll pay for the meal. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which feels so nice to be like, don't worry, guys, you don't have to worry about me anymore. I mean, you still do, but. <laughs> oh my God. That yeah. is. I'm so I'm still waiting to get there, man. <laughs> like my brother. And then same my mum, can you transfer me some money so that I can pay for them? <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. So like, what's your what was the whole dynamic growing up? Were you always the funny one? Um, they were all quite funny in their own way. My brother's very funny, so he introduced me to a lot of comedy when I was younger. And what um, was what comedy did that tend to be? He introduced me to like it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Oh right, and Arrested yeah, Development and yeah. lots of cool stuff. Basically, all the stuff that I watch now is basically from him. I think I was always influenced by maybe just being a younger sister and wanting to impress an older brother as well. Yeah. It's kind of, I think, gives you quite a good sense of humour. That is um, definitely my truth. Because mm. I've got two older brothers and an older yeah. sister. Whenever people are like, do you get older brother? I'm like, he's the coolest person in the world. I know, yeah. I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so these the last two guys that we have here, this is super interesting, actually. Um, because it's the King of Rods and the Page of Rods. And mm. Rods are the suit of fire um, and like passion, creativity, um, making things happen. Mm -hmm. And so the King of Rods is somebody who he like, he doesn't necessarily have to be working on every project to be a huge force behind it. So he's like, you know, executive producer kind of thing. Sure, sure, sure. You know sure. what I mean? It's just um, sort of there. Yeah. Behind the scenes. And then the Page. Of rods he's like almost like his like little tiny son mm -hmm. um, and he's about sort of like keeping an open heart and like not getting cynical despite the fact that you may have reasons to become cynical okay and just like keeping the love of your passion and your craft alive yes yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean to me it sort of seems like you could be going into a place where maybe you're like behind the scenes in TV or writing or directing producing I'm not really sure uh, but also it's kind of like almost a word of warning like but don't like don't lose your your true heart okay so is that something that speaks to you at all or am i totally shooting the dark i guess so yeah because i guess there's a sense sometimes with comedy where, where like i used to like love watching mock the week yeah and would watch it all the time and be like this is the best i love all these comedians and now when i yeah. watch it, i'm like oh so this person's on <laughs> oh <laughs> my god week. really and i can't really watch it in the same way yeah um so i guess maybe if i did take that step into directing or something it would mean that the illusions of film and TV would even be broken yeah. even more, I guess. Because um, even now, sometimes when I watch things, I'm like, oh, it's so the camera. Really bad with right, the camera it sort of ruins the sort of movie magic. Yeah, right? yeah. What was it like being in LA and just like really seeing the man behind the curtain? Um, was this for the TV show? Yeah. So that was in Atlanta. Oh, right, sorry. Yeah. I, but I went know, to I, LA as well. I think I just yeah. assumed LA because TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It not normally is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very cool. It was like the first time I'd been on a set that felt like a Hollywood movie set that you see on TV. But they were also filming the Ryan Gosling space film. Oh. Um, and then they filmed something else as well. So it felt very like, ooh, this is like yeah. the movies. I'm on the lot. Thing. Yeah, exactly. People have walkie talkies yeah, and yeah. headsets. The little um, like motor cart thingies. No way. Yeah, golf Did you carts. get one? Yeah, they would just like take all of us like over in them. And it just felt very like, ooh, ooh, ooh you know. That's like so this, cool. is, this is show business. Um, okay, so that, Lolly was sort of your tarot reading. I loved it. Did you, did you enjoy it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so to like this, this sort of threw me for a little bit. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, to sum up, uh, leaving a part of your life behind, getting into the space of inspiration and ideas, learning to have a sense of self-preservation, knowing that your one of your greatest attributes is that you're not afraid to work really hard, being comfortable in the fact that things are okay now and not being afraid of that success or not feel like it's about to slip away at any moment mm -hmm. because it feels like you're pretty like you're good now mm -hmm. um, and then sort of like learning to sort of take your creativity and like ascend it to like maybe a higher or different level to what you're already doing mm. but keeping the love alive yes of yes i feel like this isn't like edinburgh specific it feels like more career yes. general yeah yeah so I'm gonna like, what I'd like to do at the end of every reading is like, we go for like a wild card. Mm. Because like, who knows? Like I got like a note of advice from the universe oh, cool. at large. You can like hold this crystal for no reason okay. while you do it. <laughs> and then give it to you. I guess, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> no, this is actually really good. It's the Wheel of Fortune. It's like- I love the Wheel of Fortune. So, <laughs> everyone's favorite TV show. Yes. <laughs> No, this is like, um, this is one of those um, cards that actually doesn't come up that often, but it's like, it generally comes up when people need to be reminded that like, hey kid, like sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sure. Actually your destiny 
uh, is many times out of your control mm -hmm. and things are going to happen, shit's going to go down. Mm -hmm. We actually have very little control. Yes, 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 yes. So sometimes it can be a card that's uh, asking you to let go a little bit. Okay. I don't know if that relates mm. at all. Lali Adabobe, so concludes your tower reading. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why do you do that? I don't know. I feel like it's cultural appropriation. I think so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's something else. It's it's something else, else. Yeah. <laughs>